at Propeller Coffee. On behalf of Breville and HBC, I want to welcome you to the Third Wave Specialty Coffee at Home Masterclass. My name is Karina Odorico, and I'm the product expert at Breville Canada. We are here at Propeller Coffee, which is located in Toronto. During non-COVID times, uh, this space is absolutely stunning. It's a place that is communal, communal seating. You can grab a coffee, a pastry, bring your laptop and work here. But unfortunately, because of COVID, um, the space is closed, but they're still offering coffee through a takeout window. I also encourage you to possibly check their website, uh, propellercoffee.com and check out their roasts and have some delivered to your home. So we are here tonight to take you through step-by-step step the um, uh, master class. I am here with Bear Ranasinga, who is the director of training here at Propeller. Bear, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, so my name is Bear. I'm the director of training here at Propeller Coffee. Uh, I'm in charge of external quality control with our cafe, bar, restaurant uh, accounts and partners. Uh, here at Propeller Coffee, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, we're doing curbside cafe service. Come back for a drink, come back for beans. If you're not comfortable with coming in person, uh, you can shop online anytime. Uh, arrange for an in-person pickup or a same-day shipping. Uh, we're offering free shipping on all orders over $30 of coffee. Take a look at our website on Monday. We'll be launching our holiday seasonal blend. It's always a fan favorite. We will also be launching some holiday gift ideas, so take a look. We've also okay. just recently launched our subscription service. It is super, super, super customizable. Uh, we spent a lot of time making it for you, the consumer and the coffee fan. Most importantly, in the Masterclass context, we are offering a promo code for all attendees, Masterclass10, Masterclass10. Uh, punch it in during checkout you'll get 10% off of three bags of coffee. What a deal. Well, that's really great. Um, and we'll get some people on your website pretty soon, right at the end of the class for sure. Awesome. Um, so tonight's class, which is the Third Wave Specialty Coffee at Home Masterclass, we're going to be walking you through the steps to making coffee at home. So we know that we've been nesting um, and some of us are missing that interaction with a barista at a coffee shop. And that's a very special relationship. That is what we call the third wave coffee at home or the third wave. So um, a lot of people don't really understand what that is. Bear, can you explain what third wave coffee is? Absolutely. So third wave coffee in a nutshell is about transparency. Uh, when we talk about <coughs> third wave coffee, we're talking about the region that the coffee is grown in, uh, its microclimate, altitude, uh, the varietal of the bean itself, uh, because we're able to infer different things about the flavor profile and what we can expect from the bean, number one. Number two, uh, third wave paradigm is more about being transparent about trade relationships. Uh, we defer to having direct trade relationships, whether that's with farmers, uh, coffee growing communities, uh, trusted brokers. We're always working to make the supply chain more transparent and to tell the, the story of the coffee as much as we can. So, um, so that's great. And you have this wonderful relationship with coffee roasters. Can you tell us a bit about the importance of freshly roasted coffee in the third wave um, coffee? So when we're wanting to replicate making third wave coffee at home, freshly roasted beans is very important versus um, purchasing coffee at a grocery store. So it's a best before date versus a roasted on date. Can you tell us a little bit about the importance of a roasted on date? Absolutely. So what happens is here at the roastery, we receive the green beans. Uh, the green beans have natural acids, uh, sugars and tannins. We roast uh, all of our coffee to a medium, so we're caramelizing all those natural sugars while highlighting its desirable qualities. Uh, the importance of buying fresh whole bean coffee is you get layers of flavors that contribute to the complexity of the coffee. So 
So like a fine wine. Exactly, <clears throat> just like a fine wine. Mm. Uh, and it makes it easy to talk about the coffee and talk about what's happening. Obviously, everyone's not gonna have the same tasting experience just because my palate is different from your palate, which is different from everyone else's palate based on their own experiences. But the name of the game for freshness is those levels of complexity. That's awesome. So we have reached out to a coffee roaster. We picked up a freshly roasted bag of beans and now I'm taking it home. So uh, Bear is gonna t walk us through uh, calibrating the machines, the espresso machines to extract the coffee. Um, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna be talking about the espresso machines that we carry. So we carry about 10 um, espresso machines and some of them vary in different colors. We have uh, what we call Lux colors. So a wide range of colors that will complement your kitchen at home. But one of the really most important things about our espresso machines is that we have, uh, we respect the four keys to making espresso in a traditional way. So we have, um, we, we brew the coffee at 93 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, we have a nine bar of pressure. Um, we also um, have high pressure steam to, uh, to heat and froth milk for microfoam. So we're gonna walk through those elements as well. So what I would like for you to begin showing everyone is how you calibrate the machine once you've brought your beans home. Um, so what are the steps that we would go through to calibrate the, the machine to extract your coffee? Absolutely. So I'll start talking about the Barista Pro, which is the manual machine we're working with tonight. And I'll move on to the Oracle Touch, which is a bit more automatic. Uh, I'm still gonna calibrate it and program it and all that fun stuff, but uh, we'll kind of start with the Barista Pro. So, first things first, you're gonna put your coffee in the hopper, it's whole bean. Today we're working with Ace. Ace is always 50-50 uh, African coffee and Latin American coffee, so it's gonna taste like sweet peaches, it's gonna have a lot of uh, caramel type flavors to it, uh, it's good as a straight shot, it's good as an Americano, it's really good as a milk drink, definitely my favorite. So what we're going to do is we're going to go make sure the portafilter is nice and dry. The first thing I'm going to work on calibrating is the grind size. Uh, on the Barista Pro and the Oracle Touch, it's super easy to calibrate the grind size with the knob on the side. I already have these guys preset, but... So... Even with our manual espresso machine, the Barista Pro has a built-in grinder. So we have a wide range of espresso machines ranging from a compact uh, machine, which is manual, all the way up to our Oracle Touch, which uh, Bear is going to be using, um, which has the integrated grinder, but it also automates the grinding, dosing, and tamping. So Bear has demonstrated with our Barista Pro the manual setting, so it's manually grinding the coffee into the portafilter. Um, but Bear is going to show you how to distribute the grinds and also tamp them. So he has a special technique that to distribute the grinds. Absolutely. It's, so what's it called? Uh, <laughs> its super technical name is karate chopping the portafilter. It's the karate chopping. It's so the show us how chopping. to karate chop. I like that term. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would say it's pretty approachable. Uh, so literally all that we're doing is we're making sure all of these coffee grinds dissolve as evenly as possible in the hot water that's coming off from the espresso machine. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make sure there are no gaps, uh, no clumps, no cracks or anything like that in the puck. So like Karina mentioned, I'm literally going to karate chop this guy. Sounds funny, but it works. I like the karate chop. I think that's <clears throat> a great way to describe it. Thank you. I can smell the roast as well, it's amazing. So with our, that espresso machine, um, you can also adjust the temperature as you like. And for some roasts, I guess you would uh, brew at a cooler temperature versus a hotter temperature? It really depends on the coffee. Typically, uh, you're looking for a range of 94 degrees Celsius to 96 degrees Celsius. Uh, darker roasted coffees tend to be a bit more soluble. Uh, but it really depends on the flavor profile that you're going for uh, at home or in the cafe. 
And uh, with all of our espresso machines, we have what's called PID temperature control. And what that does is provide stable temperature throughout the brewing cycle. So once you have tamped the uh, espresso in the port of filter, what are some of the things that we should be looking for um, once the coffee is, once the water starts to flow through the espresso? Totally. What, what the first thing we're looking for is a even puck. Uh, again, like I mentioned, no clumps, no channels, because we want all this water to dissolve the coffee as evenly as possible. So the first, the primary thing we're going to look for is we want our shot to start dropping anywhere between 6 and 10 seconds. You want it to look uh, almost like warm honey. It's going to come out in like a reddish, brownish, rusty color. And it's going to come out super slowly just like that. I'm so glad that happened because that's what's going to happen at home. So um, we, we noticed at first it was drippy, but now it seems to be okay. But at home, obviously, um, we're not as experienced as a barista. So if we notice that the coffee is coming out just in little dribs and drabs, how do we correct that? Obviously, it's going to be bitter, correct? Like a bitter... We're extracting the bitters versus that nice, sweet caramel flavor. Uh, it would be more so the acids Acid. that we're uh, dissolving right at the beginning. And what happens is if it's uh, starting to drip really slowly, there's too much resistance uh, from the coffee grinds against the water coming out of the machine. Uh, we, as a result, are only going to dissolve all those acids that we talked about before but we're not going to be able to dissolve as much of those sugars or tannins. So it's going to be super tart on the palate. Uh, it's going to make your face pucker. The easy way to remedy that is to go coarser on the grind. Typically, I recommend a one to two ratio of grinds to liquid espresso out. So let's say I'm using 17 grams in the basket, for example. 17 times two is 34. I'll look for 34, maybe 36 grams out in the cup between 26 and 33 seconds. Uh, if it's significantly faster, sorry, if it's significantly slower than that, go coarser on your grind. If it's significantly faster and gushing out and not so vibrant on the color, you're gonna to wanna to go finer. Okay, that's great. Thanks for explaining that. Of course. Um, okay, so now are you happy with that shot? I would say I'm happy with the shot. Okay, great. How about you walk us through um, steaming and frothing or texturing the milk? Or would you rather jump to the Oracle Touch and do the... We'll, we'll talk about some okay. milk on this guy, just because okay. there's a bit more to see here. Uh, so pretty much all we're doing when we're steaming milk is we're creating texture and temperature. Uh, that's what gives milk drinks their, their desirable texture and sweetness. Uh, I always recommend steaming all of our milk to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where the lactose caramelizes. Uh, and you're going to sip the coffee and you're going to realize you don't need to actually add any sugar in there. Whereas if you're going to some more popular commercial cafes, chances are they're steaming the milk to 160 or 170. And you go in and you hear the milk screaming for its dear life. <laughs> it's not a good look the milk is actually getting scorched and it's an unpleasant drinking experience. Yeah. This is going to be a touch cooler than we're used to, but you, again, get a way sweeter milk and you get a more complimentary coffee flavor. That's awesome. Thank so you. with the manual machine, you actually need to touch and feel the outer jug and sense for yourself how hot the, the milk is going to be. So we are looking for the jug to just be just to be hot to the touch but not necessarily go past that absolutely so this one is um, is more of a manual setting can you move to your right sorry do you want to come and see the i can't stand too close to you because of the covid too but um so bear is swirling the milk um, and adding some air but not too much air so it's going to be a homogenized um, texture. Right, Bear? Yes, exactly. So okay. what I'm doing here is at the very beginning, I'm introducing just a little bit of air to create microfoam in my milk. 
Uh, but most of the time, I'm actually blending all of that texture with all the hot milk. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it does look like wet paint. I want it to be nice and thin. And for basic latte art, all I'm gonna do is pour from nice and high and super gently, almost obnoxiously slowly. And we're making a heart? Uh, yeah, let's go for a heart. Here? Okay, this is the fun part. This is the part I love so much is when we, when we make latte art and all us amateurs, when we try to make latte art, we, we start to guess what our pictures are. Sometimes they're seahorses, corkscrews, but you've done a beautiful heart. That looks absolutely beautiful. Can I try Thank it? You. Yeah, please go oh, for it. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. That's gorgeous. I love it. Were you saying mm. Sheldon Creek Dairy today? Oh my gosh, that's so creamy. It that's is delicious. so creamy. Very delicious. Thank you. Thank you. So now that um, we've tried it with our manual espresso machine and we calibrated, we were able to adjust the grind size. Um, well, we, it was perfect, but now we know um, to adjust it if it's uh, dribbing, drabbing, we need to adjust the coarse, uh, the, the grind size to be a little bit more coarse. And then if it's flowing a little too quickly, we want to adjust the grind size a little bit more finer. Um, so let's try the Oracle Touch, which is our fully automated espresso machine that does the auto grinding dosing tamping for us. But you can still adjust the grind size as well. Absolutely. So I know and I understand that once you start with a fresh, the fresh bag of beans, um, over a, a series of a few days, that changes as well, and then we need to adjust the grind size over time as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So when you roast your beans, uh, let's say I roasted these beans today, they're still going to have a lot of volatile gases there, uh, and you're going to get a lot of crema, which is essentially the same composition as beer gas. Uh, some people like the flavor. I don't necessarily like the flavor, but it's going to be super gassy. But the main thing is from shot to shot, uh, all those gases are going to react very differently to the temperature and the pressure from the espresso machine. Uh, that's why we're looking for a process called degassing. So let's say the beans were roasted today. Optimally, their most stable uh, profile would actually be from five to seven days. That's where you're going to get a super consistent shot from shot to shot. And that's going to be, I would say, the most stable and true representation of what the coffee is going to taste like as espresso. Perfect. So let's try to pull a shot with our fully automated Oracle Touch. For sure. Our Oracle Touch has the uh, built-in grinder. So we have already put the beans inside. And it has a touch screen with default um, uh, beverages but they're also customizable, so we can always change them over time. But the defaults would be uh, maybe milk at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So although Bear is recommending that we, we steam and froth our milk at 140, you can obviously change that to be hotter or cooler. You can also adjust the, um, the frothing level as well to make it a little bit more frothy or less frothy. So uh, right away, what we, uh, Bear has done was um, grind the coffee. So the machine has already ground it, uh, dosed it, and tamped it perfectly. You don't have to do anything, do you? Not to, this time. To that one. So he's taking it to the porta filter, and he's going to um, make a shot of coffee. So this is really easy. So because the Oracle, um, well, we have the dual boiler, Oracle, and Oracle Touch. They both, all three of them have the dual boilers inside the machine. So you're able to actually make uh, an espresso and heat and froth milk at the exact same moment. Um, whereas with all our other espresso machines, we'd have to make um, a shot of coffee and then you heat and froth your milk. But Bear is doing both simultaneously, so that really does save a lot of time. So, uh, Bear, are you happy with that flow, or is it coming out a little too quickly? I would say the flow is right where I want it to be. Yep. It's not too fast, not too slow. Okay. I have about two ounces of liquid in the cup. It smells great. Uh, I'm getting a lot of sweet flavors, a lot of acids, a bit of that kind of tannic bitterness. Uh, so I'll consider the shot nice and balanced. Okay. So we're going to do some more latte art. Is that what we're going to do? Can we do, um, what, what are we doing now? Um, <laughs> we're going to test you. 
I don't know. Let's do a little flower, or let's see a if we flower. can do it anyway. So same deal. I'm just pouring from high and super slow. I'll just get right in there. This is so exciting when we get to that latte art. And all of, like our espresso machines are really great to texture the milk for that microfoam. Oh, wow. That looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you. It's like a tulip. It is a tulip, actually. It's a tulip. So can you see? I'm going to have to try this one, too. So I'll try it for you guys at home. Is that OK? Mmm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Thank it's you. so creamy. It has a really great taste. You can taste the caramel and almost like a rich chocolate flavor Thank you. in it. It's really good. Nice. So you've taken us to the machines. Um, we have, like I had mentioned, a wide range of espresso machines, 10 of them, with, and some of them have uh, a luxe, our lux colors. And we have displayed here uh, some of the Lux colors in the range that we have. But one of the promotions that we have on right now is a special gift with purchase. Um, if, uh, if you buy the Oracle Touch, the Barista Touch, the Barista Pro, or the, um, I'll come back to that one, sorry. Uh, if you buy any of the, our four, uh, the four espresso machines, you will get the gift with purchase. Um, which is located right here. I'm gonna just turn to the camera on this side here. So this is a, a gift with purchase valued at $179. It comes with dual wall uh, glasses, a um, knock box, a canister, which is airtight to keep your roasted beans nice and fresh, as well as a polished um, pitcher and the two uh, micro cloths. So that's available with the espresso machines. It's available now until the end of December. So you could purchase them at the bay or the bay.com and you would register your product at breville.ca and um, we would mail it out to you. So that is, um, what else can we? <laughs> I guess that's it. That is it, yeah. So um, I wanted to uh, also introduce to you the um, compact espresso machine, which is our newest espresso machine in the line. It is compact in size, um, but really great for small um, kitchen kitchens. And um, yeah, then we have our Bambino Plus. And we have our grinders here as well. So if anything, we want to invest in a grinder. And Bear, if you could talk a little bit about the importance of having a grinder. So not only for espresso, but there are other coffee drinks that we have available. What, yeah, if you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I were to recommend investing in one piece of coffee equipment, it would be a high quality grinder. The difference between having a blade grinder or even a low quality grinder versus having a high quality grinder is the more dependable grinder is actually going to cut the bean and have a more even grind size. So that's going to enable you to dissolve all that coffee more evenly and to have a more balanced flavor in the cup. Uh, that applies to any sort of coffee that you're brewing, whether it's espresso, uh, pour over, drip, anything like that. The consist consistency of grind makes a huge difference. Uh, we at Propeller Coffee are personally a huge fan of the, the Breville Smart Grind Pro. It does everything from Turkish all the way as coarse as French press or cold brew uh, as evenly as possible. I have never been so impressed with a home grinder. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just getting some notes from uh, our viewers. So behind the scenes, we have Breville and HPC employees that are answering questions on the Facebook chat. So I encourage you to continue to ask questions um, of myself and Bear. But Bear, one of the questions that we're starting to get is that they, people really want to see you do the latte art and, and heat and froth the milk again. Oh, Would yeah. you be able to do that again? Which machine Absolutely. is your favorite right now? If I were to choose, <laughs> it would be the Barista Pro. I oh, like great. being super hands-on. So okay. I'll grab some milk. Okay. Can you get the milk? 
So while Bear is going to get the milk, he's going to run us through um, heating uh, and texturing the milk. Uh, Bear, one of the things too is a lot of consumers uh, of course, really love uh, dairy milk, but some people are starting to move towards non-dairy milk and plant-based milks. Yes. Um, obviously, they behave a lot differently than dairy milk, so what are some of the tips that you can give us uh, when heating and frothing uh, plant-based milk? Oh, my goodness. So, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, my number one tip when it comes to milk alternatives is to get a barista blend milk alternative. The difference is dairy milk actually has a balance of sugars, proteins, and fats uh, suspended in water that make it ideal for texturing and also give it that pleasant mouthfeel, obviously. Uh, whereas if you were to get certain brands of milk alternatives, whether it's almond, soy, coconut, uh, rice, macadamia, etc. What happens is you're actually soaking that product in water, so you're getting primarily water. Uh, the difference with the barista blend is you actually have a little bit of fat in there. So when you are steaming the milk, it's going to act uh, a bit more similarly to dairy milk, which we're familiar uh, working with. My number one tip is to shake it super hard and make sure you have all of that water and fat and protein and sugar emulsified so you have the best chance at doing uh, some really well textured milk number one and number two some latte art don't be disappointed if you can't do the latte art because even seasoned baristas such as myself struggle with milk alternatives that's awesome awesome I got thank this you ready for, for you. taking care of that for me you're very welcome amazing Thank you. So, um, oh. so, so also on camera, we really want, uh, people are like blowing up and saying like, we really need you to show us how to do that uh, texturing milk on camera. So oh, I don't yeah. know if we can get a closer shot of Bear texturing the milk here with the Barista Pro. So our Barista Pro uh, color that we're using tonight is Damson Blue. And um, the Damson Blue color is absolutely beautiful. And actually, it's the color of 2021. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> so now you do. <laughs> Today I learned. Also, um, so uh, we have another question. What kind of milk is used in the cafes? What's the percentage ma milk fat that's used in, um, in cafes? Uh, homo, milk. homo milk. I always recommend the most fatty milk that you can get uh, for your cafe. It's gonna be super rich, super sweet, super creamy, uh, and ultimately deliver the kind of coffee experience that you're looking for. Anything that has lower fat percentages uh, tends to be not so rich on the palate, which has its place, but I would not recommend. Sorry. And now we oh. have the texturing of the milk. So uh, are you able to grab that on camera? I could even just talk about it. So okay, what do. I'm doing here is I'm just going to get that kissing sound. That means I'm introducing air to the milk. It's expanding a little bit in volume, but most of the time what I'm looking for is I want to get a whirlpool in there. The deeper the whirlpool, the more it means I'm blending all of that microphone that I made with the rest of the milk. I'm just reaching over with my hand to temp it. Uh, just before it's almost too hot to hold, that's where I'll stop it. And essentially you're feeling the, the heat in your hands and yeah. So awesome. we really want you to bring that cup to the camera if you can and show them um, how you pour your latte art if you can. For sure. 
That's great. Thanks. People are really right asking, Bear. So this is the money shot. For sure. So <laughs> I'm going to start pouring from high and super gently. I'm going to swirl it around just a bit. And when I'm ready, about halfway, I'll just get real close, lift it, and cut it just like so. Sorry, that was, that was a bit thin, but that's pretty much what we're looking for. Nice. Awesome. That's great. So with all of our espresso machines, we do respect the tradition of making um, espresso um, in, the, in the culture of third wave specialty coffee by um, brewing the coffee at 92 degrees Celsius, a hot steam, dry steam to, to do microfoam and latte art, um, and the nine bars of pressure, um, all of our espresso machines respect those four keys and we have a wide range of manual versus automatic espresso machines with built-in grinders and some without so you can invest in a grinder and as Bear had mentioned you could still use it for other um, coffee drinks such as pour over or drip coffee. And again, just to repeat uh, the gift with purchase that's available at the Bay. So if you purchase the Oracle, the Oracle Touch, the Barista Touch, or the Barista Pro, you will, get, um, you will receive the gift with purchase uh, by registering with the Bay, uh, sorry, the Breville.com. Uh, and you will receive the, um, the knock box, the canister to keep your coffee beans fresh, two dual wall glasses, micro cloths, as well as a polished um, pitcher. So I'm just going to check my phone one more time to see if there's any more questions. Um, questions for tonight. Oh yes, we have a couple more. Awesome. Um, for propeller coffee roast, transparency is good, but are the coffee bean growers fairly compensated? Uh, that's a great question. That is a great question. And I would say that's the main focus of having a direct trade relationship or working with a trusted broker is to make sure that everyone is getting fairly compensated. So uh, for example, we've been working with the same farm in Brazil for uh, our entire life, uh, for the past seven years. And over the course of this time, we've built, uh, like I mentioned, a trusted relationship with our friend Gabriel. Uh, he drops by all the time just to come say hi or drop off samples, anything like that. Uh, so sustainability is one of our biggest uh, values as a company and that's not only in the environmental way but also in the social way. Okay, we have another question um, and it's about the maintenance of the machines. How often should we be descaling our machines? Uh, so the awesome thing about the Breville products is it will actually give you a little reminder to descale your machines. Uh, in a commercial setting, you're uh, actually using cleaner every night. So you're back flushing the machine. It breaks down any buildup that's uh, accumulated throughout the day. I would say defer to the machine itself. It'll tell you when it needs uh, some maintenance and some TLC. That's amazing. Um, so I, um, I'm not sure if we have any more questions, so I'll just take a little quick little look. No, there are no more questions. So is there anything else you can tell us about um, roasting coffee? So I know that if, I, if we can go back about um, the roasting of your blends at light and medium roast, if you can tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I would say our approach at Propeller Coffee is to be as consistent as possible with all of our beans. Uh, we use a Loring, 35 kilograms, and we use Cropster. Uh, the reason we roast all of our coffee to a medium or a medium light is so we're caramelizing all the natural sugars in the green beans. Uh, the problem with roasting too light is you're not actually, again, caramelizing those sugars. Whereas if you're roasting too dark, what happens is you actually burn off all of those desirable flavor compounds. So instead of getting uh, all these crazy flavors of terroir and region and climate are uh, you're going to taste more of the roast flavor which has its place but 
Uh, that's kind of why we're buying such high quality green, number one, and number two, roasting everything to a medium roast. Okay, that's wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I just wanted to wrap up again, sorry I keep scratching you, um, wrap up again the espresso machines that we have here on display. We have the uh, Barista Touch, which is kind of like the mini-me version of the Oracle Touch. Um, but also blends um, the same uh, quality as the Barista Pro uh, that Bear has been working on. So it has the touch screen, um, the touch screen just like the Oracle Touch. So this is the one that we have on display and it comes in the black truffle as well. Um, we have the Oracle Touch in the black truffle uh, and the Barista Pro in the variety of Lux colors and we have the Oracle Touch at the very end. Um, I think we have one more question. Yes, the questions are rolling in. Um, what is froth numbers to use for latte art on the Oracle Touch? Okay, so if we can go through that the setting on the far right, which shows the frothing level as well as the heat of the, the frothing, the heat. So for milk calibration on the Oracle Touch, today we're using 140 degrees Fahrenheit and the number of the froth is five. That's good. And if we were using plant-based milks, how would, what would you recommend the frothing level be a little bit higher versus... Mm, um, not necessarily. Uh, I feel like the trick would be, again, to shake the package of milk alternative uh, just to make sure everything's nice and emulsified. That way you're gonna get uh, as similar a result to whole milk that you can. But I would stick with the level five setting. Okay, we have another question about the, um, how would we know that we're using the correct uh, coffee ground size when we're brewing the coffee? Uh, what is it again that we're looking for? That's a good question. Primarily what we're looking for is two things. Uh, balance of flavors, number one, and number two, uh, richness of body. So you're looking for the coffee to be mostly sweet with a little bit of acid and a little bit of uh, tannic bitterness to balance everything out. And you want the shot itself to be uh, super rich and super syrupy in the cup. You don't want it to look too watery but you also don't want it to look too short and concentrated. You want it to be somewhere in between. When you swirl the cup, you want the rich reddish brown to coat the sides of the cup. And between those two things, you should start directing yourself to the neighborhood of a battle shot of espresso. Okay. Um, we have another question about the other um, drinks that the Oracle Touch can make. Um, so one of them is the Americano. Um, can you explain what an Americano is? Absolutely. Uh, and the right way we should be making it. That's what I was about <laughs> to touch on, actually. I feel like this is one of the biggest questions I get while I'm out there on the field. Uh, an Americano is hot water and espresso. Uh, does it make a difference? Which one you put first? 100% it does. What happens is if you put espresso first and hot water on top, you're gonna disperse all of those aromatics that give the espresso its flavor. So please don't do that. I would be offended. Hot water first, espresso on top. You're gonna to get uh, that crema, number one. But number two, you're gonna get the most vibrant and accurate depiction of the flavor profile of the coffee that you're gonna get. Okay, so we have um, another question. And you're not going to believe it, but they still want to see you do the latte art one more time. More latte art? <laughs> we could do that. So we can, yeah, try it one more time. For sure. Sweet. And then walk us through the calibration on the beans one more time. Absolutely. Okay. Can I have so, another cup? Yeah. Got a cup for you. Thank you. Right here. So this is our last cup. <laughs> All right. So. It's very 
very popular, this uh, microfoam. And, and again, just walk us through how you heat and froth the milk one more time. Absolutely. And the karate chop. Yeah, we're definitely karate chopping, making sure there are no clumps or cracks or channels. We're going to tamp this. Okay as evenly as possible. So the tamping mat also comes with the gift with purchase. That's uh, one thing I didn't mention before, but that comes with the barista pack here. The barista pack is the um, $180 value that you would get if you purchase the Oracle, Oracle Touch, the Barista Touch or the Barista Pro. It comes with the um, uh, tamping mat, two dual wall cups, micro uh, fiber cloths, a canister to that is airtight to keep your coffee beans really fresh and a polished um, uh, frothing jug that Bear is using here as well. So Bear just pulled uh, another shot of espresso into the cup and he's going to um, heat and froth the milk. So about how much milk are you adding to the pitcher? I always go just below the spout. Uh, it's gonna give you the most control. It's gonna be the most forgiving. Once you get a bit more comfortable with steaming milk, uh, you can use less and less depending on your cup size. And obviously you don't want to waste any milk. That'll be bad. But I would say to start out, start just beyond the spout like that. Uh, you're gonna be able to control what's happening and you're gonna get great texture. That's awesome. Thank you for those step-by-step -step instructions. So no I'm getting texts that all the viewers out there are really interested in um, learning the microfoam and the and trying to do some latte art as well. Absolutely. So that's the fun part, right? We love we love that part. It's always um, an exciting part to making your cappuccino. It is. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, when we're first starting, we want that kissing sound, but 99% of the time we want it to. Whoops. Uh, just be a deep whirlpool in the pitcher. That's what's going to get me the texture that I want. That's great. So we're really happy here. Sorry? That's good. Oh, thank you. That's really great. So he's feeling the temperature and then you're just going to manually stop the espresso machine when you're ready. Always give the um, steam wand a wipe with a damp cloth and you'll want to purge the uh, water through as well. So as Bear um, does his latte art, uh, he gives it a little tap to kind of break up the bigger bubbles and swirl it around to, to make it more homogenized. So what are we doing here, Bear? What, what is your latte art of choice? I'm just going to go for another thin little heart, just like that. So the key would be, once you're about halfway, you get as close as possible to the surface of the drink as you can. Uh, that's what's gonna get you this crisp white uh, design on top. But the name of the game is the texture of the milk. That's amazing. Let's see that one. Oh, that looks good. Bear, I want to thank you so much tonight for being with us and you. um, sharing your expertise, your latte art, and all your knowledge for us here tonight, the viewers, um, everyone on Facebook who took the time tonight to join us. Um, we really appreciate it. And I want to thank Propeller as well for this beautiful space um, and allowing us to work here. Thank you to the Bay for your Facebook platform as well. Um, we want to wish you all a really great night. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, and stay safe during these COVID times. So uh, we want to wish you a really, really great night. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So this looks really great. Thank you so much. No this problem. was your latest one. <laughs> so delicious. <laughs> Definitely precious. I'll have this one. Mm. That's really good. Thank you. That book is so good. That's good. Okay, so what else are we going to do?